You love your cat, right? And I bet you want them to be as content and happy as they can possibly be. I'll be sharing nine things today which will fulfill your cat's needs and desires and maximize their bliss. <coughs> Welcome back to Cats with Matt. If you're new here, I'm Matt. And with 25 years working as a cat behaviorist, I've learned a thing or two about cat happiness. In this video, I'll show you the changes that have made the biggest positive difference to my clients' cats. Number one, vertical space. Cats love to leap, climb, and survey their territory from above. As a species, they're both predator and prey, so being up high helps them feel safe and in control. Us humans live a far more two-dimensional existence. Expand your cat's environment to the next dimension by adding cat shelves, cat trees, and climbing posts. Even just clear the top of that wardrobe or mantelpiece filled with knickknacks to open aerial feline opportunities. Number two, predatory play. Engaging your cat's natural hunting instincts is key, especially with indoor-only cats. As a predator, cats have a deep-set desire to stalk, pounce, and catch small beasties like mice, insects, and birds. And if a cat doesn't have an outlet for these desires, they can feel frustrated and unfulfilled. This is where you come in. By setting aside a little time each day to provide suitable, exciting outlets for their desire to hunt, you'll be turning up the fun and fulfillment factor for your cat. The best type of play is to provide a small, quick, and erratically moving object at the end of a piece of cord. It won't matter too much what you use, as long as it fulfills this brief. Fishing rod toys you can buy at the pet store are brilliant, but something like a small folded piece of paper tied to string will also do the job. Aim for two to three minute sessions whenever you notice your cat up and looking for action. Three plays a day keeps the cat blues away. Number three, get a proper scratching post. Stretching up and scratching is a natural feline behavior. It maintains a cat's claws, flexes their muscles and tendons, keeping them limber and agile, and enables them to mark their territory both visually and with scent from the pheromone glands in their paws. Your cat needs to have an appropriate option for scratching, but so many commercial scratching posts are short, wobbly, and just generally pretty useless. Get a scratching post, or three, that your cat will actually use and love. It should be tall enough that your cat can reach right up to full stretch. So for most cats, that means a meter high or 40 inches. It should be sturdy enough that it doesn't wobble or move when they scratch, so they feel secure and can really get into it. A wall-mounted scratcher is a fantastic option, as they're rock solid, plus they have the bonus benefit of acting as a climbing pole to higher areas. Pick a scratching post which is covered in a material your cat can drag their paws and claws through and shred over time. Sisal fabric is better than sisal rope, for instance. Number four, cozy retreats. Cats sleep almost double what we do, so it's particularly important that they have safe, quiet places to relax, sleep, and recharge. They'll find their own favorite spots, but you can probably improve the options available to them by adding comfy and closed places for them to doze around your home. You'll know you've done a great job if they ditch their old favorite spots for the new upgrades. Ideally, these beds should be just bigger than the size of your cat curled up and enclosed on three sides and ideally at the top. These will provide the perfect hideaways, especially if placed up higher than human waist level in your home. Warmth can also be a huge draw card, especially in colder climates, so place these resting spots in sunny areas or consider a pet heater mat under the cat bed. My ancient uh, cat Lucy loves her heated mat it's the best thing I've done for her, I think, based on how frequently she sleeps there. Although she also likes the high up spot with the light. Number five, frequent small meals and puzzle feeders. Mimic a cat's natural feeding behavior with multiple small meals throughout the day. When free living, cats eat around 10 small meals in a 24 hour period. And so if you feed them like a small human with only three square meals, they can get hangry. Automatic time feeders can help spread a cat's daily food allowance out throughout the day if you're not at home or overnight while you sleep. 
Using puzzle feeders where a cat needs to roll or interact with a dispenser can also spread their food allowance out through the day and, and it also adds an extra layer of mental stimulation. Number six, provide a gold standard water supply. Cats can be fussy about their water, especially compared to their uncivilized cousins, the dog, who often seem happy to drink water from pretty much anywhere. Each cat's different, but most prefer wide ceramic or glass bowls filled to the rim. You'll be doing them a huge favor by ensuring their water is refreshed daily and the bowl is cleaned frequently. Get rid of the dreaded double bowls for both food and water, as it's far too easy for food to contaminate the water side and cats prefer to drink away from where they eat and vice versa. And finally, consider a cat water fountain. Our cats love theirs. This is probably because in the wild, running water is more likely to be clean, so it's appealing for thirsty cats. Number seven, a microchip cat flap. These prevent external cats from entering your home. For some cats, this can be absolutely huge. The occasional appearance of a neighborhood cat into your home can be massively stressful for some cats, even if it's just the smell they leave behind. Your cat won't be able to relax just in case another intrusion occurs. Ensuring they have the safe core territory of the home to retreat to is critical to your cat's happiness especially if tension exists between your cat and neighborhood cats. Number eight, introduce cat grass and catnip to your home or garden. Despite being obligate carnivores, which means that cats need to eat meat, they also benefit from some greenery in their diet. Cat grass is a mixture of oats, wheat, or barley seed, which you can purchase and easily grow in your home. Nibbling on this provides safe and enjoyable enrichment, aiding digestion, and providing some novelty for your cat. Catnip is more of a thrill, as the oil in the plant, nepetalactone, triggers enjoyable play behavior in 80% of cats. It seems that cats less than three months of age aren't responsive to catnip, so if you've tried it with your kitten and they seem a bit meh about it, try again when they're a little older. As a safety side note, not all plants are safe for cats, and lilies in particular are toxic, so please do your research before introducing other types of new greenery. I'll include a link in the description to a resource that will help you select cat safe plants. Before we move on to number nine, I'm stoked you've watched up to this point. So I've got an important bonus recommendation I'll cover at the end for you. Stay tuned. And if you found this video interesting or helpful, it'd be great if you hit like and subscribe, it really helps. Number nine, be cautious about getting your cat a feline friend. While this tip isn't strictly speaking about making your cat happier, it is about protecting the contentment and bliss they currently have. Cats can be very social with other cats, especially those they grow up with, but broadly speaking as a species, many cats don't tolerate unfamiliar cats very well. Often I see cases where the introduction of a new cat into the household brings about tension and stress for a cat, sometimes even in the long term. Unless your cat has a history of positive interactions and close bonds with numerous other cats, it's often best to maintain the peaceful status quo. Let your cat reign supreme as the solo kitty of the household kingdom, or maybe as co-ruler with their long-term established feline companions. And now for the bonus tip, provide an enhanced gold standard litter box setup. Cats are drawn to toileting areas where they can dig. That's why they're pretty easy to toilet train. Give them a tray with some litter and they'll be drawn to use it but often the litter boxes we provide fall short of what they'd ideally prefer. Check out my video here, where I share how litter boxes are designed for humans rather than cats. You should opt for a large box that's as long as your cat from the nose to the tip of their tail. Ideally, it should be unhooded with fine grain, unscented clumping litter that's deep enough that pee doesn't get to the bottom of the tray and get stuck there. Clumping litter is easy to scoop, which means you'll scoop more, and it enables you to remove almost all the pee. And this combo of regular scooping and no pee or poo remaining in the tray is really gonna be appreciated by your cat. By incorporating these nine tips and providing a toileting throne fit for a queen, you'll be maximizing your cat's bliss, which, if you're like me, is what life's all about, having happy cats. If there's a cat behavior topic or problem that you'd like me to do a video on, I'd love to hear your suggestions in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.